the mother. This is prescribed for fifth semester BA English Language and Literature in your core course paper Literature of Late 20th and 21st Centuries. Now first let's have a look at the poet Gwendolyn Brooks. She was an American poet, author and teacher. Born in the year 1917 in Topeka, Kansas and she died in December 3, 2000. Now regarding her early life, as I told, she was born in Topeka, Kansas and her name, uh, full name is Gwendolyn Elizabeth Brooks. Her family moved to Chicago when she was very young and she grew up in the south side of Chicago, an experience that would greatly influence her later work. Now her education. She attended Wilson Junior College and later graduated from Englewood High School in Chicago. And she used to write poetry at a very young age and was encouraged by her mother. And we see that her first published poem was named Eventide and it appeared in American Childhood magazine when she was just 13 years old. And this gained attention in her high school. Later, she married Henry Blakely and had two children, Henry Jr. and Nora. Then we see that in 1945, she published her first collection of poetry and it was called A Street in Bronzeville. And this collection received critical acclaim and established her as a significant voice in American poetry. Then in 1950, she got another recognition. She became the first African American to receive a Pulitzer Prize. That's very important. In 1950, she became the first uh, African American to receive a Pulitzer Prize. And that was awarded for her second collection, Annie Ellen. And this collection explores the life of an African American woman from childhood to adulthood. Now regarding her later career, we see that she continued to write and published poetry, publish poetry throughout her career. And in her works, she reflects the changing social and political landscape of the United States. But more than that, she explored themes of racial inequality, social justice, and the struggles faced by African Americans through her poetry. And as I told in the beginning, she was also a teacher. Uh, she taught creative writing at various institutions, including Northeastern Illinois University. She served as a mentor to many young writers and poets. And in 1967, she became the Poet Laureate of Illinois. And that was a position she held until her death. So even now, she is regarded as one of the most important figures in American literature, particularly for her contributions to African American poetry. Now about this poem. So before reading the poem, let me tell you what are the major themes uh, explored in this poem or simply what is this poem actually about. So that will be beneficial for, from a learner's point of view. Now, this poem, as I told in the beginning, is a wonderful poem and also it is a powerful and poignant poem that explores the emotional and psychological impact of abortion on a woman. So when we see the title of the poem, it's simply the mother. So it's normal that we feel that this poem is also like many other poems which celebrate motherhood. But actually, the content of this poem is different. It differs significantly from conventional poems that celebrate motherhood because in this poem, it explores the complex and often painful emotions associated with abortion. 
rather than portraying a joyous or idyllic view of motherhood. Now this poem is very significant because it explores the topic of abortion, a topic not commonly addressed in conventional poems, celebrating motherhood. So here, instead of depicting the joys of raising children, Brooks delves into the emotional aspects of terminating pregnancies. Okay, so here, this poem explores the theme of unfulfilled motherhood. So there is a sense of loss and longing. And this poem can be considered as a psychological poem. Because through the poem, the readers, the listeners get to know about the internal world or the internal mind or the, uh, it, it is a, like a psychological exploration of the emotional consequences of abortion. It goes beyond that physical act okay, and delves into the mind, into the psyche. So you can consider this poem as a, a psychological poem and these are some of the major themes explored in the poem. The first one being abortion and its consequences. So already told that the poem addresses the theme of abortion and the lasting impact it has on the mother. So it delves into that emotional aftermath of the decision. So the decision can be uh, based on different reasons. Okay. Anyways, that decision to terminate that pregnancy, it can be, it can have emotional consequences on the mother. So this poem explores that. Then secondly, it talks about the guilt and remorse. The guilt and remorse for the abortion, whatever may be the reason, the mother uh, feels a sort of guilt and remorse for uh, stopping that pregnancy. Okay? The memories of that unborn children linger in her mind. And here the poet grapples with such emotions. Then the third uh, theme that we could uh, derive from these lines is that there is a maternal connection. That means even though the child is not born, or even though the mother has taken the decision to abort, there is a there is a profound connection between the mother and the unborn children. Okay, so uh, that's also explored in this poem. Then, uh, as I told, the theme of unfulfilled motherhood. The poem explores that idea of unfulfilled uh, motherhood, and uh, it reflects on. Uh, that uh, it reflects on the potential lives that were that were never fully realized. Okay, those children who were never born, or the dreams of those mothers to raise those children that were never fulfilled. Okay, so that unfulfilled motherhood that is a very strong theme in this poem. And then we can see there is a reflection and self-examination throughout the poem. As I told is a psychological poem so there is a sort of uh, self-reflection self-examination okay the poem has a reflective tone the the poet or the speaker uh, she contemplates uh, she thinks about the decisions that she made she reflects on those decisions and there is a sort of introspection there is a sort of self-examination uh, she will be thinking about uh, her decisions whether it was right or not uh, even if she has reasons to justify her decision to abort the children or the, abort the child, still there is a, a, a feeling of guilt. Okay, So uh, that leads to complex emotions. So the poem captures a range of complex emotions including love, sorrow, uh, sense of responsibility, then uh, the emotional intensity, that decision to abort and the consequences of that decision, uh, how long she has to harbor that sense of guilt. So, so many complex emotions are involved in that poem. And then we also see that there is, a, uh, there is, a, there is an element of lament and mourning for the lives that, uh, that, when, that were not born. Okay? The, the speaker mourns uh, for the unborn children. 
and uh, not only for the unborn children but also for the experiences and moments that she will never have in her life she thinks that if she had children she could have had uh, beautiful moments with them she could have raised them she could have fed them she could have played with them many many beautiful moments but because the child is not born all these moments are lost okay so she is mourning she is lamenting over all those uh, things that will never happen in her life again and then uh, we see some ambiguity and complexity that means the poem does not provide easy answers okay or uh, we cannot draw conclusions so easily through this poem instead it presents a very complex and ambiguous nature of the speaker's feelings that that means the readers it is with the readers to engage with the themes and to uh, understand it at a better in a, on a better or more personal level so each of us when we read and reflect on that poem we will come to different conclusions of that poem so that's what the author is also aiming at uh, okay so uh, altogether this is a very thought provoking and emotionally charged poem that addresses the sensitive and complex topic of abortion so i think uh, even before we move on to the reading of the poem uh, such uh, such an analysis from a learner's point of view it would help you to appreciate that poem better now we'll move on to the reading of that uh, poem the mother by gwendolyn brooks abortions will not let you forget you remember the children you got that you did not get the damn small pulps with a little or with no hair the singers and workers that never handle the air you will never neglect or beat them or silence or buy with a sweet you will never wind up the sucking thumb uh, or scuttle of ghosts that come you will never leave them controlling your luscious sigh return for a snack of them with gobbling mother eye i have heard in the voices of the wind the voices of my dim killed children i have contracted i have eased my dim dears at the breast they could never suck i have said sweets if i sinned if i ceased your luck and your lives from your unfinished reach if i stole your births and your names you your straight baby tears and your games your stilted or lovely loves your tumults your marriages aches and your deaths if i poisoned the beginnings of your breaths believe that even in my deliberateness i was not deliberate though why should i whine whine that the crime was other than mine since anyhow you are dead or rather or instead you were never made but that too i am afraid is faulty oh what shall i say how is the truth to be said you were born you had body you died it is just that you never giggled or planned or cried believe me i loved you all believe me i knew you though faintly and i loved i loved you all so here we see a mother and she's a mother who has undergone multiple abortions and the very first line she states abortions will never will not let you forget the opening line immediately introduces the theme of abortion and its lasting impact the use of will not let you forget suggests that haunting and persistent memory if ever you had an abortion you will never be able to forget that that's what she means you remember the children you got that you did not get the speaker says that the lingering memories of those unborn children she says that she had children or she became pregnant with children but at the same time she did not get them that means they were not born she could not hold them in their hands in her hands alive the damn small pulps with a little or with no hair so that's the image of a uh, of a of a newborn baby the damn small pulps with a little or with no hair like how they look when they are born uh, when they are just born that that descriptive language conveys that vivid image of how a baby looks when they are born so this mother could not see that or enjoy that because uh, her child was unborn 
even before the child was born it was aborted it was killed the singers and workers that never handled the air that means if the child was born it would have grown into and become a worker or a singer or might have taken up any other profession so on and so forth but all that will never realize will never happen because the child is unborn you will never neglect or beat them or silence or buy with a sweet you will never wind up the sucking thumb or scuffle of goes that come so she talks about some of the moments in parenting she states that her children her unborn children will never be neglected will never be beaten up will never be silenced if they make any tantrums uh, when parents when children create tantrums they will try to silence them they will try to maybe beat them or buy them a sweet whatever but for her children this all this will not happen why because those children were unborn similarly you will never wind up the sucking thumb uh, that the babies suck their thumb and when we see that we uh, try to take off uh, that thumb from their mouth so that will also not happen so all these are some uh, normal natural instances that we find in uh, parenting the pleasures and the agonies of parenting all that will not be experienced by her by the speaker because her children are unborn or scuttle off ghosts that come so when her little children uh, during their young age when they are scared of ghosts or when they are scared of something else parents try to protect them try to pacify them but all those moments are lost in her life because again uh, these children are unborn you will never leave them controlling your luscious sigh so here she says about that that long connection with that unborn even even if that child is not born it's dead and gone uh, the the mother still feels that connection with that child and that connection will not uh, be uh, wiped out from her life ever again she will always have within her that suppressed maternal longing that connection with that unborn so you will never be able to give them a snack or uh, gobble your mother eyes over them so all these moments will be lost so that's the first stanza the second stanza i have heard in the voices of the wind the voices of my dim killed children i have contracted i have eased my dim dears at the press they could never suck she feels like she has very faintly feebly like the voice of the wind she has heard the voices of my dim killed children the dim killed children refers to her unborn children they were not fully formed they were not fully uh, grown or uh, fully bloomed but they were very tiny uh, very feeble so that's what she refers to the dim uh, killed children and they were Uh, killed as well they were not born as well so she feels that she has heard them she have uh, heard them and next she uses uh, words associated with childbirth she says i have contracted i have eased so just before childbirth the mother feels contractions around her stomach and how the e- baby eases out through the body of the mother so those uh, words associated with childbirth are used to emphasize that physical and emotional process of contraction and release okay and then she says my dim dears at the breast they could never suck so the image of that dim dears refers to again that unborn children they couldn't nurse they couldn't uh, drink uh, the breast milk of the uh, speaker so she was not able to feed them so this intensifies her sense of loss and then she says i have said sweets if i sinned if i seized your luck and your lives from your unfinished reach if i stole your births and your names your straight baby tears and your games your stilted or lovely loves your tumults your marriages aches and your debts if i poisoned the beginnings of your breaths believe that 
even in my deliberateness i was not deliberate so here is that self reflection that self contemplation or uh, that self examination that we have uh, said the speaker is contemplating her decision whether it was right or not okay whether it was a sin or not so she is asking sweets my sweet children i don't know if i sinned or not i don't know if it was my decision uh, which seized your luck your luck to be born okay and if it was because of my decision that your lives became unfinished your lives did not reach its destination your lives were not fulfilled uh, i don't know if it was because of my decision then uh, again i feel like uh, i stole your births and your names your straight baby tears and your games all those moments all that life all that happiness all that luck everything that was awaiting you in your life maybe because of my decision it was all stopped it was all terminated and you lost all of it okay your silted or lovely loves your tumults your marriages aches and your deaths if i poisoned the beginnings of your breaths so again she is thinking that various life experiences the unborn children would have had from love and marriage to the inevitabilities of life and death everything every pains and every happiness associated with life that everybody uh, who is born has to endure the unborn children might have also had all such uh, Uh, all such experiences but they didn't have it because they were unborn fine uh, if they were born they could have experienced all that but uh, they were not born okay so the poet uh, is feeling uh, a sense of guilt like if it's uh, if it is because of me that all this happened that you lost all your life and its potentials and its experiences and its happiness and uh, sadness and vibrance and everything and then when after thinking about all this after harboring uh, a sense of guilt in her mind she gives a form of self explanation she says believe that even in my deliberateness i was not deliberate that means she suggests that even though the decision was intentional even though i i had to or i was forced to we don't know the reasons or we don't know why she had to take such a decision to abort her children that that too not once but many times uh, but she's saying they were not made with a complete understanding uh, of their consequences it was not deliberate i did not do it deliberately i did not understand many things completely or i did not i was not aware of the consequences completely i never felt that this would bother me this would never go away from my mind until my last breath Uh, so i never thought about the impact of its consequences so she's she's giving a sort of self explanation that uh, don't think that i did all this purposefully but i'm sorry and i it was not deliberate so that's the second stanza then she is asking uh, she is questioning the purpose of expressing or having such a guilt she is asking herself though why should i whine whine that the crime was other than mine so she is asking herself why should i complain or why should i harbor such a guilt why should i blame myself um, and she is also finding an answer to her question she is saying since anyhow you are dead or rather or instead you were never made so she is saying now there is no point in uh, feeling guilty or thinking about all those things again because uh, she is emphasizing that anyways you are not there now you are dead and gone or rather you were never made i have not seen you i have not seen you in full form i have just experienced you so uh, i think like you were not fully created so she is pacifying herself but that too i am afraid is faulty or what shall i say how is the truth to be said so again her mind is having complex emotions at one level she is feeling very guilty uh, she is like seeking forgiveness 
for having to abort her babies but at another level she's trying to justify uh, she's trying to explain self explain her actions she's trying to pacify her uh, complicated thoughts and after all this she's left in a state of complex mind she's confused so she's asking i don't know whatever i'm thinking whatever i'm doing is it faulty or not is it is, is it correct or not or is it fault what shall i say how is the truth to be said so she acknowledges that complexity of the situation she cannot put in words she cannot express what is actually there in her mind and she says you were born you had body you died now it's like a confrontation with the reality okay so she is saying you were born you had a body and you died that means they were formed in the mother's womb they had a body they had a physical presence but finally they they couldn't uh, live uh, be born on this world and live their life as other normal human beings uh, they had to die okay so that is the fate uh, or that is the not fate that is the truth that she finally confronts she says you were born you had a body and you died it is just that you never giggled or planned or cried so uh, just like other children who were born uh, you did not uh, you couldn't have that everyday experiences of childhood okay you never giggled and cried uh, and i as a parent could not plan your life all those subsequent uh, stages of life that were not experienced by you just because you were not born and in the final lines she says believe me i loved you all believe me i knew you though faintly and i loved i loved you all so in those final lines she expresses uh, her deep love for those unborn children so despite the faintness of their existence uh, she says she repeats i loved so that underscores that sincerity of the emotions she had that maternal connection that she still has for her unborn children she says whatever uh, happened uh, i just want you to know that i loved you all okay uh, so that is that uh, form of motherly love that you see in this poem which is quite different from uh, the other poems that celebrate motherhood and the associated experiences of motherhood so this poem offers a uh, offers an introspective perspective of motherhood or you can say that it invites readers to consider the multifaceted aspects of maternal experience there are different aspects of maternal experience there are different uh, ways of motherhood or expressing that feeling of motherhood or feeling that feeling of motherhood so it is uh, one of these that the poet explores uh, through this poem and this poem challenges the traditional notions of poems uh, celebrating motherhood by uh, by addressing a very sensitive and often stigmatized topic of abortion thank you